What's up, guys? If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Also, please smash that like button on the video and enjoy the show. So I was down there um, two weeks ago, and we literally went to, we found, we were up going up river, and we found this horrendous spot where they had hauled, like, I want to say, like, 30 ironwood trees out of the jungle. They'd, they'd cut everything to the ground. They had a logging mill going, heavy machinery, and... Uh, His Instagram, Chris. Keep going. And... Uh, that yeah, first like, video you see right that there? heavy machinery that yeah, stuff yeah. has never been there before like this one like this this that that people don't realize that's 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 a new road look at it it's barely even like flat yeah the trees were cut the land was burned and now they're smashing it out with that thing and then people are going to come in with chainsaws and they're going to do worse and so we went up there and again for people that are listening for the first time jungle keepers we work with peruvian indigenous conservationists it's totally peruvian led and peru has some of the more, most important part of the western amazon and so we go out there and we talk to these guys and we actually said so what are you doing why you know can we is there any way that you will stop murdering this forest and they actually said you know what they said timber prices have been dropping and we cut all these trees and we really don't want to do this and they were totally open to the idea of stopping and actually jungle keepers is taking over the operation we just added two thousand new acres to Whoa. the reserve like this is the thing instead of treating these people mm. like enemies instead of looking at loggers and being like they are evil we go have a beer with them yeah and then we make friends with them change and then we, hearts and minds yep and then we find out that they're not making that much money and that it's really dangerous logging and that we could pay them more to be a ranger and so we build a ranger program. And then we tell people all over the world, I come on podcasts, people find out about jungle keepers and we're protecting 50,000 acres of the rainforest. And we need to be protecting 300,000 yeah, acres. That's what I'm saying. We need to add another zero to that. Yeah. Because the rainforest is like roughly 27 out of 31 times the size of America, something like that. It's like it's damn near the size of the U.S. Yes, continent. Yes, it's mo continent. mostly the size of the continent right. of the U.S., yeah. So we're, how many square miles is it? I forget off the top of my head, Chris. How many square miles is the, I know is the Amazon rainforest? The estimate is 400 billion trees. I know that. 400 billion. All right. Yeah. 2.7 2 million, 2 .7 million square, square miles. miles. So you want to protect at least 500,000. That's wanna, a nice chunk. I want to protect 300,000 acres, which is or, actually yeah, sorry, it's a yeah, teardrop yeah. in the ocean. But it's, still, it's that's nothing. one ninth. That's one ninth of the... Mm. Or wait, no, no. You said 300,000 acres. 300,000 acres. I was it's, thinking miles. No, sorry, no, much smaller, much smaller. It's one river. We're trying to. We're trying to. I'm a big believer in, in pick one problem, solve it. Yes. Then move on to the next problem. And so my entire career from age 17 until 36 has been protect this river. That's it. And so the last year, it, the Madre de Dios, the Las Piedras Las River Piedras, that runs yeah. through the Madre de Dios. Yeah. yeah. And so this last year, we've made a lot of progress forward, a lot of... It's been our biggest year. What does that look like when you say we made progress forward? It means hiring rangers. It means working with loggers to stop logging operations. It means jumping in and talking to some indigenous landowners that are trying to protect their forests. You have indigenous people. Um, one guy was protecting this area, 22,000 acres, and he'd been protecting it for 30 years. And a bunch of people came, and we didn't know why they came. They started cutting forests. They cut maybe six or seven football fields of, of forest. And so we went, you know, I go with JJ and we get we get there and, the, and these people are there and, and you can see them scurrying as, as, as we're walking up, they're hiding the chainsaws and they're doing all this stuff and they're throwing on some, you know, native looking stuff and they take out their bows and arrows. But still we're like, are, are we about to get shot at with bows and arrows? And so I, I put the drone up. I wanted to see what we were dealing with. And so we go over them, because see how big it is, see if they have weapons, whatever else, and they start firing bows and arrows at the drone. Mm. Okay. Okay, so that's what we're dealing with. And then we fly the drone up. And we see that not just, we thought it had been, you know, maybe like, you know, several acres that they deforested. And then behind there are just all these patches that have been ripped out of the jungle. Just boom, boom, boom. So we, we finally, we go up to them and only because... You know, we have an indigenous team leading in the front. We, we walk up to them and they they got their bows out and they go, welcome to our village. <laughs> welcome to your village. Thanks. And we have the landowner with us. He's got the deed to the land. Welcome to your village. Okay. Where are you guys from? They're from a thousand miles away. Okay. What are you doing here? And they said, <laughs> no, this, this is our village now. What are you doing here? Okay. 
So we we had to come in and support that local landowner as and what the what happens is is that it's the it's the narco traffickers. Mm. The narco traffickers realize that if they take poor people because when we said we it, the, the math didn't add up. It's kind of like uh the Wait, t- are, you, are you talking not Mexican narco traffickers? Uh, no, no, the Peruvian ones. Okay, Peru, we were right on the Peruvian, Bolivian, and Brazilian border, so we're right. We're on three frontiers, and what what wasn't adding up was why are these people coming out into the jungle and cutting down forests? Now think about it. Hold on. So let's just say it takes seven hundred dollars worth of gasoline to get from town that deep out into the jungle, and then it takes fifteen hundred dollars to buy a chainsaw, and it takes this, and all of a sudden you're up at thousands and thousands of dollars, and you're looking at these people. And they're living in a grass hut. And you're like, why? How? Why are they? The narco traffickers realize that if they have outposts deep in the jungle with people mm. that support them, it's much easier to move contraband and find safe houses. So what they do is they start establishing these networks, and then it's double it's double secured under. Oh well, they're just they're just loggers. There's lots of illegal loggers. Why are you going to go after them? And it's like, ah. And so we realized what this was. We spoke to the Peruvian police and then they were able to help the situation. But you literally have indigenous people fighting to protect their land and no one's out there to help them because you're past the point of law enforcement. You're so far out in the jungle that it's just whatever happens, it's just no country for old men. Whatever happens next happens next. There's no help coming. Like how far into the jungle, for example, is your research station? It used to take us... You would leave from town and go by boat and you'd have to travel. You'd have to leave at five in the morning and then around six o'clock at night, you'd have to stop all day on the boat, sleep on a beach on the side of the river in the jungle and then go same thing the next day, two whole days by boat going up river just to reach this research station. That's how deep in the jungle it was. Then they cut the Trans-Amazon Highway and a logging road over and now we can reach it in like five hours. Whew. Roads change everything. Roads are, but it's also kryptonite. the problem because they're. Oh no, we I hate that road. That yeah. road is the worst because they're cutting everything down. What when, when they so? What's the name of that road again? Uh, the Trans Amazon Highway. Okay, so the Trans Amazon Highway. How long is it right now? Approximately. It goes across the whole continent. The so, whole continent. Yeah, I mean, you could literally drive from Lima to Sao Paulo. You can. It crosses South America. This is the first time in history that there's a land trade route from the heart of the Amazon to Asia. Whoa. Yeah. It's been Whoa. called the single most detrimental human project that has ever happened. This is it right there? It's got like bridges and shit I too? Think that's probably closer to some city. I don't know. That's probably on the but Brazilian still. side. I, I've never seen that. When I see it, it's just like a, it's just a road. How wide is it? Like a regular it's a, it's road a, here? It's a two lane. It's a two-lane road that goes for thousands of miles. But that's thousands of miles of trees they're cutting down. What, oh, what, trees when, they're cutting down. And then to make the road, they had to bulldoze into the virgin Amazon rainforest. And so as what, they're- What's the virgin Amazon rainforest? I'm saying, think about this. 30 years ago, when the World Bank and Brazil and China got together in the IMF, <laughs> and they all decided, <laughs> let's just have like a global planet eater summit. <sighs> and they forged out into the Amazon. They were going into places that no one had been before. And so as they're bulldozing their way through it, it's basically it's the movie Avatar. There would there would be indigenous groups, and they would just you know shoot them, or they'd, they'd bull- shoot them. Yeah, or they'd bulldoze past them, and then the indigenous people would throw rocks at the bulldoze, and, and then they'd shoot them. Are these uncontacted tribes you're referring to, or some just... of them were just in, just native Indians, and they just, just shoot them? Yeah, but the violent. I mean, there's definitely examples where loggers on our river are shooting at the uncontacted. I know that what I read about the creation of the Trans-Amazon Highway was that as they made this highway, that people then were flooding in behind the heavy machinery. And those people wanted to get land. And so again, it turned into like sort of this manifest destiny thing where it was like, we're going to come out here and we're going to occupy this land. And so for the, as, as, oh, as the story always goes, there'd be indigenous people out in the jungle and all of a sudden this heavy machinery would show up and a bunch of guys with guns and they'd be like, this is our land. And they'd be, no, it's not. And then a lot of these cultures would be so sensitive. They would have such, um, they would be, have lived in such isolation that they would have immune systems that had no defense against what we have. Living mm-hmm. in the Western world, connected to the modern economy, we've been in New York City subways. We have an immune system that people living on a remote island aren't going to have. No. So they have not built up that immunity. And so what happened was, which actually goes right back to Graham Hancock. Um, Entire tribes were wiped out from like during the building of this. during the yeah during the building of the Trans Amazon Highway. Yes, 
And that's why they've, many people have called it the single worst human project on nature that's ever happened. The amount of trees, wild heartbeats, indigenous cultures, actual human lives, absolutely horrendous. But it's in the middle. Look, oh, look at that picture of all the logs. I actually want you to save that picture for me. Uh, down to the left a little bit. Left, left, yep, right there. Oh. What yeah, is that's this? that's what we see. That's what I see. Oh yeah, yeah. I've seen you take videos of this. Yeah, because because then off of the main road, they call it the fishbone effect. You have these little dirt roads that come off, and once you build a like road, like estuaries, yeah. Yep. And once you build a road, then everybody can get in. And once they can get in, because if you take a person, yeah, and try to have them go through a jungle, it's impossible. Yeah. What? What? That's actually something I wanted to ask you about. So, and you describe it in your book. Sometimes there's like trails, right, that you're in, but then other times. You know, you read about Percy Fawcett and stuff. It's just the grown jungle into its into itself. So you got to machete your way through that shit, right? Yeah, I, I was out with. Uh, I had brought some people to the jungle. Um, you know, me and JJ, we have Tamandu expeditions. We we bring people to the jungle, and we do everything from you know we have the world's tallest luxury treehouse to some people are like literally they sign up for like Paul trips where they're like we want to go do what you do. So I've just been like, yeah, come with me. And so we were out on the, out, out at night with these people and we're out on this trail. And one of the guys was like, yeah, you know, the jungle isn't that bad. He was like, I thought it was solely, and he just started like, and I was like, okay. I was like, cool, guys, we're going to cut from this trail to that trail. I was like, so we're going to be off trail for a minute. And it was, you could just, I could just hear the people behind me in the dark. Because when I go, I'm not going to oh, hack the through the, I'm not going to, we're in the dark. It's, you have 150 feet of canopy above you and I'm walking <laughs> through the jungle. Jaguar right there. And I don't use a machete because we're, you know, we're in a conservancy. We're in an area where we're protecting the rainforest. So I'm on the trails. I use a machete to maintain the trails, but this is not a trail. I'm just doing this for fun. So why so, am I going to go hacking? So what are you using? Your teeth? No, you just walk through it like an animal. So when they went, <laughs> and so um, I got a, I got a tail of 10 people behind me like ducklings. And so everyone's at night in the jungle. And now all of a sudden there's vines on them there's caterpillars falling out of trees there's leaf cutter ants there's bullet ants there's snakes and all of a sudden they're not on a trail anymore and the the tempo of the group like the happiness level of that group yeah falls oh yeah yeah then we made it out to the other group now this is the thing is now why did i enjoy that so much that's you my you you love seeing people out of their element because they you you know so much and you know all of us no, are sitting here pulling no. our asshole out to the sunlight at 5 a.m every morning <laughs> <laughs> legs over your head you know and you're like come on bro just um, get out in nature actually come see this shit you know i do think i do think though that one of i think i think that this is it i think that i spent so many days especially as a teenager where i would go out and today made me think of it because of the way it's raining but like if i wasn't here right now i would be it's like hurricane flooding all over like the tri-state area right mm -hmm. i would be out in the woods the mountains are just exploding street. Like the streams, I could literally see places where there was like cars parked because they wanted to see if the bridge was going to hold. Like the, the 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 rivers and the streams are going crazy right now. Mm -hmm. Today's a perfect day. Get your backpack, little backpack. You get one sleeping bag. <laughs> you get one book of matches and you get a flashlight and a knife. Now go out into the woods and make it till tomorrow and try to make fire. And it's such a good meditation it's such a good humbling experience because it doesn't matter who you are, how good at surviving you are. Getting a fire started today, very difficult. Finding shelter today, very difficult. On a day whenever the wind is blowing and the rain is falling and you're going to spend one horrible, wet, sleepless night on a rock somewhere and then it's going to teach you. And that's an important perspective to remember. It makes you feel better about your life every day. It makes you appreciate your couch a lot more. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. What, so, what, so in an so environment, sometimes I give that to people. In, <laughs> in an environment like that, though, around here, if you had to do that, how would you spot a place to sleep? Well, the cool thing here is that there's rocks and mountains. You know, mm. I mean, up in the Catskills, actually finding shelter, you could, you could, you could fashion something with pine or find an outcropping of rock. You could probably find a dry area. I, to me, surviving in the you know, Eastern North American forests uh, would be, even in the rain, even in December, I think I'd be quite happy with that. Mm. Easy. You know, you're not going to sleep on a bullet ant. I'm happy. Thank you for watching the video, guys. Please hit that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.